something on TV. One of the sickest stories ever. And we're like, dude, this has to be a fucking movie. The megastar, who was Benjamin Button, then Moneyball's Billy Bean, is now interested in playing none other than Jimmy Keene. And, uh, of course, in the end, they, they, they said that they were going to turn into a movie. It was basically about this guy, right? It was this fucking show about serial killers. So, of course, we're going to watch it. In 1993, Jesse was a high school sophomore devoted to home and family. Jessie was really very much of a homebody, so one bike ride up the road and back, she was done. Um, so we're watching this thing about fucking serial killers, and the whole time they're talking about this, this drug dealer kid, and we're like, how the fuck does this, and they keep showing this serial killer guy, it's like, does, and they're showing the drug dealer older, you know, and not in jail and all that shit, going, what the fuck happened? You know, just the way they put it together, it was riveting. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? So basically what happened was there was this kid, right? He played football. They called him the assassin because every game he ever played, he took somebody out, right? Was it the assassin? I heard they called you the assassin in football. That was a good thing, I take it. Yes. Was that Jack Tatum? Jack Tatum. Now I forget. But it was something like assassin. So... He fucking, uh, and just movie star good looks, all right? And he's the star of the football team. All the women loved him. I mean, this guy was just like, it was, it, he, he looked like a movie star and his life was a movie. So his big Achilles heel was he, he didn't have money. And he wanted to keep up with the rich kids, so he started dealing drugs. And he ended up being really good at it. And by the time he was like 20 years old, this fucking guy was making like a million dollars a year. He expanded to cocaine, and at the tender age of 17, he moved to Chicago, where the business and profits exploded. He was now a big fish in a bigger pond, Lake Michigan to be exact. He was his own in-crowd, fast cars, faster women, and souped-up living. All the hot spots, uh, all the big nightclubs, all the owners I was in tight with, um, I would come in there and have carte blanche in every place that I went to. Were you feeling invincible? Yeah, there was a certain point where I would say there was an invincible feeling. And it almost seemed like this American greed type story as opposed to this serial killer thing. And they keep going back to this serial killer fucking piece of shit who's killing these girls, these teenage girls. So long story short, he's laying in bed one night and he's just thinking, I got to get out of this life. I'm so sick of looking over my shoulder. I can't do this anymore. How am I going to get out of this? But he's addicted to the money. He's addicted to the life and all of that type of stuff. And he hears this rattling on the door. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, it's the serial killer. And he obviously fought the guy and won. What the fuck happens, right? All of a sudden, the door fucking boom. The whole door just blew off the hinges and came flying into the house. And all of these DEA, FBI, and locals all came in in single file line with their automatic weapons. Was that alcohol, tobacco, firearm? I don't know what the fuck it is. So anyways, they fucking come FDA, Food Drug Administration, the uh, Transit, Chicago Transit Authority. I don't know what the fuck it is. Whatever the fuck that thing is, they come fucking blasting through the door, run up, you know, a bunch of guys with the fucking minor helmets on with the fucking Uzis from a Steven Seagal movie. Go, get on the ground. If you fucking look at me, I'll blow your fucking head up. And the whole thing was over. And he disgraced his family name. Did your pop know what you were doing? Did he suspect? He didn't suspect it until much, much later. Jimmy grew up in the shadow of his father, Big Jim, a giant of a man who was a cop, fireman, and hero to his son. He was my best friend. Yeah, he was my backbone in pretty much everything I did. And they never said it, but I imagine they probably took his fucking pictures down off of the high school and all of that type of shit. You know, did some OJ shit, right? Take all his trophies and all that fucking shit. So it's over, right? So then he's sitting in jail, um, and they try to get him to flip. And this is it's just some fucking kid from the suburbs, right? So I'm thinking, well, he's out. He must have ratted somebody out. So he doesn't rat anybody out. He's like, I'm not telling on anybody. So then they're like, all right, well, fuck you. So now we're, you're not going to help us out. We're going to fucking give you, you know, the full extent of the law. We're going to uh, prosecute you. So they gave him 10 years. The guy gets 10 years. And in court, Beaumont showed Keene no mercy. 
He was coming at you on all oh, fours, yeah. though, wasn't he? Oh, God. He, I mean, he was, he was a bulldog. Jimmy was convicted and slapped with a 10-year sentence. He's in like a minimum security because, you know, he didn't really uh, have any violent past or anything. He was just getting people addicted to drugs. That's all he was doing. <laughs> so his dad is devastated and all that shit. And he, he goes to jail. And uh, meanwhile, this serial killer guy is out there killing these girls. So I'm thinking, what the fuck? And they keep going to commercial. Me and Verzi are looking at each other going, how the fuck are they going to tie this fucking thing together? The baseball kid comes with bat and six balls. Assembly required. New from Ohio Art. Long story short, um, they ended up catching the serial killer guy. Uh, I forget how he fucked up, but they ended up catching him in one of those things where you seem, re like, relieved and all of that type of shit. And, uh, but he had this thing where he wouldn't admit to all of them, and if he came at him, he would just clam up and wouldn't say shit. He denied confessing to any killing, including Jesse's and Trisha's. What's more, he claimed it was all a misunderstanding about disturbing dreams he had. So he ends up going to jail for like either one or two murders for life. He's never fucking getting out. So meanwhile, there's all these parents whose daughters were killed by this guy and they don't know where they are. And all they just want is the body. They want fucking closure. And these parents are just tortured by this fucking thing. All right. So they're trying to figure out because he won't talk to them. He won't tell them anything. And he's also in denial, and he keeps going like, actually, I didn't kill him, and blah, 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 blah. And then one day he'd be like, oh, I did, and I blacked out. I don't remember. Like, the guy was just a fucking creepy goddamn mess, right? So they end up coming up with this idea that they need a charismatic person to talk to this, to befriend this serial killer, gain the guy's trust, and maybe he'll tell him where, like, the bodies are and that type of shit. So they go to this fucking dude, Captain America. You know, the football player, the movie star looking guy who fucked his whole life up because he got involved in drugs. Right. And they approach him to go from his minimum security to go into a maximum security prison with his murderers, rapists, animals, fucking maniacs. Right. And, um, you know, to go in there and they said, if you get, if you get this information out, we'll take your sentence and we'll just wipe out the rest of it. We'll set you free. He'd already done like three, four years. And he came up with an outside-the-box scheme to get Hall, which would risk the life of that charismatic convict he had just put away for dealing drugs, Jimmy Keene. What happens when I've got to deal with all these crazy killers and stuff? You know, what if I get shanked? What if I get killed? I mean, am I going to survive this? So meanwhile, Captain America's dad had a series of strokes, you know, and was basically going to die. And he had to go see him. I mean, it's like a fucking movie. So he goes, all right, fuck it. I'll, I'll do it. We cried through the window to each other and we talked for a while. And uh, he didn't even know about the offer. Nobody knew about it. Jimmy now realized that he had a one-time only opportunity to fix the mess he'd made for himself and get out while his dad was still alive. But I want it in writing that you're definitely going to let me go. So they say, yeah. So they go, all right. He goes, Here, they go, here's the deal. We don't want you to approach him for at least six months because he's very cagey. And if you fucking, you know, come at the guy the wrong way, he just fucking walls himself off and that's it. All right. So this kid comes, he goes in, he goes, fine, cool. And he walks in there. He's like, I don't have six months. My dad's going to die. All he wanted was to get in and out with Trisha's location and as fast as possible. Within the first two months, two, I'm sorry, first two hours, he goes into the fucking jail and he fucking, uh, on purpose, accidentally bumps into the guy. I was waiting with my tray, and I look over, and there he is, 20, 25 feet away from me, sitting there all by himself. It felt like a magnet was compelling me to come to him. And finally, I bumped shoulders with him on purpose. And then he immediately apologizes. He goes, oh, I'm sorry about that, buddy. I didn't see you standing there. Hey, he goes, I'm new here. Do you know where the library is? And the guy tells him where the library is, and he goes, thanks, man. Uh, you know, and he said something to the effect of, uh, yeah, you're a good guy. It gives him a little slap on the shoulder. That's it. And goes to the fucking library. And they set it up where his fucking, his cell was right across the hall from the other guy. And he says to him, he goes, hey, man, he, he runs into him again. Hey, where are you staying? Blah, blah. He goes, oh, that's crazy, man. You want him right across. And he says, oh, it's good to be with a good guy like you, blah, blah, blah. Right across from each other. And he goes, uh, so then fucking the serial killer guy. One day he goes, hey, you want to get lunch with me and my friends? 
And at this point, me and Verzi were fucking laughing our balls off, going like, this kind of social shit happens in prison? Okay, uh, some friends of mine, uh, gonna have some other uh, murderers and serial killers. We're going to get some, uh, maybe get some, uh, you know, a, a frapping uh, a fucking rap or something. You want to come down? Just kind of hang out. <laughs> I'll meet you down in the commissary, right? You always think it's all just getting shanked and trying not to get raped, right? So he goes, yeah, cool. So long story, he gains this guy's fucking confidence. And one time he actually goes in and he sees the guy. He's got a map with all these red dots on it and all that shit. And as I came up from behind him, he had all these little different statues lined up. 10, 15 of them maybe. And I couldn't tell what they were at first. And as I got closer, I noticed he had a big map laid out. And he dove on that map and folded that thing up really fast and slid it off to the side of the table. And I go, what are these things anyway? He says, there are these little falcons. He's trying to get to it and blah, blah, blah. So the guy starts opening up and he finally ends up telling him this fucking stories um, of all the women that he killed and all of that shit. And, uh, and sort of kind of mentioned, he gave him like sort of, enough information about where the bodies were and the captain america guy kind of fucked up because once he got the information he thought he had enough information to find all the bodies and get himself out of prison and he just couldn't oh wait i forgot the best part i'm sorry this is gonna be like a tarantino movie now we're gonna jump backwards another way he gained the guy's confidence was one day they were sitting in the tv room watching tv He's sitting next to this guy, and this big fucking giant dude just gets up and turns the channel without talking to anybody. And as he turns the channel, the serial killer, who was a, like a meek little guy, and he just kind of went, he just sort of said out loud to nobody, he was like, hey, I was watching that. That's not right. I was watching that. Like, powerlessly, really fucking weird psycho thing. And the fucking Captain America dude walked up to the big dude and knocked him out. Just beat the guy's ass, hit him with an uppercut, fucking forearm shiver, and just sent this guy flying through some chairs. And then they stuck him in the hole. That's what happened. And then when he fucking comes out, tell me this doesn't sound like a fuck. I almost don't even believe it. So that's when he gained the guy's confidence. That's when the dude told him. And the second he tells him, this dude, Captain America, couldn't hold it in anymore. And he goes, dude, you know what? You're a sick fucking piece of shit, blah, 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 and flipped out on him. Then you got a little full of yourself, didn't you? I did. That I thought it was good for me to unload on him and tell him what I really thought of him and who he really was. I said, you know, I said, I'm going to be going home tomorrow, Larry. And I said, you're a crazy killer. And I started calling him everything you can think of. And then the guy, the serial killer just backed up and he goes, he goes, who sent you? And he goes, so-and-so sent you, right? And he named the prosecutor. And then he just fucking disappeared. And the map disappeared, too. So then it's like they didn't get the map. So there was a thing. We don't know where the fucking bodies still are, blah, 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 blah. But you got him to admit to these fucking murders. So we know that the women are at least dead, blah, blah. He, basically, then he did enough where he got out. Um, and the whole time we were watching this fucking thing. We were just going like, this is a this is a fucking movie. Now, I guarantee you when they do the fucking movie, they don't even need to add any mustard to it. But I guarantee you in the movie, he won't flip out in the end. You know, or if he flips out, but then he somehow and then that'll be the last little like hiccup. Like, oh, no, they didn't find the map in the movie. He'll find the map and then the parents will actually get closure. But in real life, you know, it's not a fucking movie. And it sucks. But isn't that unbelievable? That That's like a. It's so fucking nuts. Like at one point they were visiting his old house and he showed, he goes, yeah, I used to live here. There were a lot of hot clubs here in the 90s. This was a place you were doing business as well. Live, worked, and played right here, yes. And it was, it was a good time. An incredible story, whatever. Whatever, I know half of them fucking glorifying a goddamn drug dealer, right? Isn't that what I'm doing? Um, and in the end, I know you guys wanted a happy ending. There wasn't a happy ending because he fucking, he kind of screwed it up in the end. But they still let him go, though. Which is sort of odd. Right? But they're furious he blew his cover before finding their daughter. Why would you have been so close? Yes. And then give it up? like you did I try not to dwell on that at all because it, it eats at me and it's it's very hard to deal with that he was that close 